So outside the offices, uh, Charlie actually owns both the offices. Uh, that's the Sovereign Wealth one, which uh, we used to do the meetings at for obviously our monthly meetings and anything that we need to go through and um, just have a catch up as well. Uh, I think that's one of his other business ventures as well. I think that's where his main business ventures actually and he actually has the building across the road which is uh, the modern family office uh, which you will see in a moment uh, and that's where we will have the meeting for today. Uh, so that's one of the gaffes and the second one uh, is just behind us uh, with uh, Charles Carr I think so. That's where we'll be going today. Sarah's uh, come out to greet us. Sarah's, P uh, Sarah's actually Charlie's PA. She's the lady behind the plan, organises stuff and makes sure that I come on time to the meetings, chases me up on the emails. So that's uh, that's pretty much the schedule for today. And as you can guess, we can you can guess which one's Charlie's car by the by the edge plate. So uh, we've arrived, this is the man. I'll let Charlie introduce himself and what we're doing today and uh, just give a bit of background as to what we do. As, again, I get quite a lot of questions, uh, obviously, about Charlie and about the brand and see what we're all about. So I think uh, it's better to actually come from Charlie rather than me and he can actually give you an overview of what actually is. So, yeah. so my, my job is a venture capitalist, which basically means I invest in different businesses, financial services, property and leisure. And within leisure is the Ultraflex brand as well. So I had the opportunity to work with Cuba a couple of years ago, jumped at the chance and, and we've we built a fantastic facility at Rotherham. And also we've got exciting plans for the future. I won't say too much, but that will prompt a million and one questions I'm sure for you. Uh, so today what we're gonna do is work on a little bit of a development plan for Cuba, both professionally and personally. One of the things I do as part of my work is, is mentor people. Uh, it's invitation only, it's a very small select group and what I do is work with people who I think have got exceptional potential uh, and I definitely see that in Cuba, he's got the ability to do something incredible with both with his bodybuilding but also with the business aspect so it would be a pleasure to, to work with him and uh, I know we can achieve great things and then one day I'm sure he'll invite me on his yacht and I'll be sitting back kicking back with a big cigar and a port of brandy or whatever uh, and celebrating some of this stuff as well. <laughs> yeah. One day, one day. <laughs> I think uh, I'm sure they invited me first, but uh, maybe, maybe some years we'll, we'll catch up. The question is for you, Adam, for yeah. me. So, what are the key things you want to get out of it? Um, everything, anything you can, uh, anything can throw at me that will make things better, really. Yeah. What, what, what I tend to do is, is have a think about and have a talk about kind of what your key goals are and then also talk about what you, the barriers are to your success. So what are you finding that you're struggling with or that's not going as well as you'd like it to? Uh, and then a bit of, within that is a bit of challenging. So as long as you're comfortable for me to do it, sometimes to sort of, sort of say, why do you do that? You know, or actually, how does that work? Or yeah. something like that. Um, because it's just to, just to have that process, just take a step back away from things and think, well, hang on a second, why, why do I do it that way? Or uh, how does it work as well? So we put coaching as one big goal. How about other ones? So for the next five years, I definitely want at least another two, three gyms. Okay. Mm. Think about big goals. Big goals. Big goals. With uh, obviously with bodybuilding, that's all set. But this is more about business, really. Well, it can be. Well, the thing is, it's about everything for you. You know, yeah. so so include it because the, the the temptation is to compartmentalize and mm. say, "Well, actually, that's my bodybuilding life over there." But these will link into mm. into that. Oh, well. it definitely does. Like recently, like I've, I've definitely structured my days much better. Where everything's so much more disciplined mm -hmm. and since I've done that like the productivity is just so much better so I definitely need to make sure that the goal of mine is to actually keep that up and make sure that that stays okay. so like each day I've got a journal so when I start my day I do my morning morning non-negotiables which I always do every morning so I'll go out for a walk I always spend two hours either a podcast or a book ebook and that's either that's done in the morning first thing and late at night as well okay. before bed so when I first wake up, there's probably an hour of my routine, which I do like with vacuums, posing, um, obviously like quick power hour, half an hour with replying to emails, etc. Yeah. And then obviously I go downstairs, I start to write my journal out, write my daily task, what I've got to do on my given day, mm. and I structure my days like that. But that's something I definitely need to keep up mm. and make sure I don't let that slip. Yeah. As you know yourself, like, further you get into off season, like, you do let them things slip. Down a little bit, yeah. But I think if I can keep that level of discipline and productivity, all year round, I think that's like key to really, yeah. really achieving everything I need to do. Yeah, because yeah, you give me the time to give you the opportunity to do all this stuff. Yeah. And what, so what do you think is the biggest threat to, to that happening? Just not letting myself get lazy. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing really. Have you ever read the, the book uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad? Have you heard of this? 
I'll get it for you. So Rich Dad Poor Dad is a book that, that encourages people um, to, to, to do exactly what you're doing, which is to not live to their income, is mm -hmm. to save and reinvest. Um, and then when you see the effect of that reinvestment, uh, it's really, it, it, the, the name sounds a strange one, but it's the, the lessons that sometimes wealthy families teach the kids, and which sometimes we, we know other families don't get the opportunity from, which is just about, we see it all on Instagram's terrible for yeah. it, you know, oh, flashing right, cards, right. this, that, and there is a balance because you shouldn't save everything. You've got to enjoy yeah. your life, but there's a, there's a kind of ratio where you say, actually, well, if I save this much and I enjoy this much, then you know you're going to be in a great position. And also because you're doing it very early on in life, you can be, you know, if you flash forward in a few years and you've got the gyms and you've got the properties and all that sort of stuff, actually you'd be in a great position financially um, because as you get older, you probably may not want to work at the same flat out pace. No or you just still work flat out but on the things you really enjoy. Mm -hmm. The most successful brands in the world have different pricing tiers. So if you go to um, Audi, you've got your R8, mm -hmm. you know, you've got your S, your S cars, you've got your top end stuff, and then you've got your mid-range kind of stuff. But also if you want to go in and buy an A1, they've got something at that level. Mm -hmm. And it's thinking about how you have a three-tier pricing system for what you do. And what you're doing is giving them to a choice. So you're not rejecting anybody, you're just saying actually, um, you know, your, your, your time is finite, you're accepting the fact that you want to still work with them, you're just going to need to have someone else who supports you in the, in the dealings with them. Wow, I still oversee it. Yeah, exactly. You still oversee it, you're still there involved in the creation plans, but what you're there able to do is subcontract out some of the legwork. So the people who are 100% get you, fine, simple. The people who are on there, it might be that they get 50% of your time and 50% of someone else. And if you think at the moment, if you imagine you're a factory for producing successful bodybuilders, male and female. Um, but at the moment, you're um, pouring in the liquid, you're cooking the cake, you're doing the wrapping, you send it out mm. and you're packaging it and it goes in the van and then you're driving the van to the house. You know, big factories don't work like that because you're just limited your capacity. So what you want is to say, well, actually, I've put the ingredients in it. I have came up with the ingredients formula, but someone else puts it in somebody in the middle helps shape it all i quality check it at this point here and then they they distribute it and so what you're doing is you're taking yourself out of some of the, the process and it's imagining imagine that, that factory mentality imagining right this process line yeah. um you might look at what you do and I, you, you know much better than i do but you say okay actually there's six stages can, how can you delegate three of those stages to, to somebody else to do yeah it all makes sense for some yeah and it's a hard one to do because so I, I did this with some of my clients years ago where I, I passed them off to some of the advisors I've worked with um, because you have a psychological attachment to them mm -hmm. and you have a level of guilt. But with this, you're not abandoning them, you're just changing how you work with them. Obviously, to, do, to actually be able to, to see that through, obviously, I still need to build up even a stronger reputation and obviously a stronger time. But I think within time, over the next couple of years, I think that's definitely doable. Yeah, yeah. With, with how well everything's growing right now, I think that's definitely more than doable. Have you thought of a mission statement? Do you know what I mean by that for, for your coaching? Mission statement is like, if someone could only read one paragraph about your business, yeah. what would it say? So our mission statement is like, our, our, our mission statement, yeah? Mission statement, mission, mission statement, mission statement, statement yeah. yeah. Right, I, I, I've heard about that. Yeah. So like, what we stand for, what our mission is, yeah? Yeah, so you like say what like, we, what we actually, uh, I'll yeah. try and do a really terrible job of it, but uh, you know, it'd be something like along the lines of, um, we believe in personal, um, highly effective um, and individually um, delivered coaching solutions to help our clients achieve their physique goals. Now that's, you know, there's a lot more you could do with that and make that a lot better, but it's that kind of thing. It's, you know, what, what are you setting out as a business to do? Right. And, and what, you know, I suppose it's a way of really helping people understand it. People's got the attention span of a goldfish generally these days. And the world is so fast paced and there's so much information. People aren't always gonna sit down and absorb it all. So it's thinking, right, okay, if I've got someone's attention for just 30 seconds, how do I explain to them what we do for people? You meet someone off the street who's got no idea what prep coaching is. Yeah. It's how do you help sort of, you know, articulate that to them. And you can, you know, you wanna use a lot of positive phrasing. You know, we offer outstanding, um, solutions to our highly motivated clients and uh, have a go at it and try a few different versions to kick it around with with making other people and yeah. then Baumi send it to me and I'll, I'll kind of 
you know, sort of say, well, actually, I'd add this or take this out or something like that, um, and get to a final bit. Um, and then that's where I suppose the reason I focused a lot on the coaching is because that's the one that seems like it takes up a good chunk of your time, but also that's the one where if you boost that income, it then uh, that income filters through to the property goal, filters through to the gym goal, because you say, right, okay, now I can afford to set that to one side and then uh, and then benefit from, from all of that. So in terms of goal setting, like the short term goals, which we already spoke about, is like the next five years goals, yeah? Mm -hmm. And the long term goals are like the goals that are like big, big goals, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And, um, you start to think about okay, well, you know, have I spent my day doing things that will get me towards those those yeah. those things? Um, but also, um, is picturing what those what those things might look like. So, uh, you, you know, where does Cuba live? What does Cuba drive? Mm. Where do you go on a holiday? Um, uh, how do you spend your time? Uh, all this sort of stuff. And you can then start to build a bit of a vision of that because it's a powerful motivator, isn't it? It's like you would do the same with your physique. You say, okay, well, when my physique is complete, this is how I look. I look you know, freaky hair, super shredded, all this sort of stuff. It's just the same with life. I think, okay, well, actually, um, if money was an object and you, you know, I clicked that, that or oh, rubbed that magic lamp and you were 15 years forward, right? What would Cuba's house look like? Where would it be? What's in Cuba's house? You know, yeah. And these are sometimes things you haven't thought about or you've got a bit of a picture here, but okay, but tell me about what's in the garage. You know, yeah. do, do you have a little gym in your house? You know, actually, wh whereabouts is it? Do you, have, do you have a nice view? Have you got a swimming pool? And all that sort of stuff, because it's thinking forward to, okay, well, rather than ending up there and kind of figuring it out, is what do I want it to look like? Blow my <laughs> um, mind, Phil, my brain's going about 100 miles an hour. So, so yeah, no, we some. Um, yeah, love it. <laughs> yeah. When you think of all this, we focus a lot on all the positive stuff, which is great. Is you have to think of, think about what are the threats to this. Mm. So, what are the threats to your coaching business? What are the threats to the gyms? What are the threats to to, to you as a bodybuilder and all that sort of stuff? And not because we want to spend a lot of time dwelling on the negative, yeah. but because the, there are threats to all of those things. I think, okay, well, how do I mitigate those threats? How do I I know they're coming, and how do I deal with them before I get there? we're all creatures of pleasure and pain yeah so you say okay if i achieve my goals what's your reward what do you get out yeah. of it and if i fail my goals what's my pain what 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 yeah. gets taken away um and so you know it has to be something that's important to you so you say right okay if i achieve my goals i go and do um this that you really want to do you want to go on holiday somewhere or you want to do that and if yeah. i fail not only do i not get a holiday but i have to get up uh, half an hour earlier and I have to think about you know, something that you're really not going to enjoy I yeah. have to spend half an hour sat there thinking about why I failed that and how, how that makes me feel really dwelling it because then you just do everything to avoid it in the future mm. if you spend 90% of your time focusing on okay this is how I move forward in bodybuilding but ten, even just 10% of how do I not move backwards how do I stop myself getting injured how do I stop myself getting ill how do I stop having something that derails the train because you know with all this stuff, if you just follow the, the, the route, you're gonna end up exactly where you want. You just need to make sure there's no, uh, it doesn't jump off the tracks at any point. Yeah. It's basically just regular therapy work. I, I've been having pretty much two a week. Mm. I've had blood work done pretty much every three months as well. Yeah. Every two to three months as well. Mm. We're staying on top of all that as well. But yeah, you're definitely right with them things. That's definitely something you need to stay on top of. Because last year I didn't really stay on top of it as much. Yeah. But like, even if you just moved, like, say so you moved your blood work to do it monthly, yeah, you know, yeah. why, why not, do. something like that, you know, yeah. just say, okay, like, I'm really going to keep on top of this, I'm going to really close to it, because um, those are the ones that can derail things. Yeah. Uh, and all of a sudden you're like, right, actually, I got my blood work back, I hadn't had it done for four months because I got busy, yeah. and it's terrible, I need to take a good six months, or, you know, out, out of my schedule, it's not ideal, whereas you're really on top of it, even if it just keeps telling you, you're great, you're great, yeah. you're great, you're great. Still no. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's one of my big regrets is, uh, I didn't get enough physio, so I've ended up with all sorts of injuries and niggles. Should have looked after myself because you have this one, this one body. Yeah. Um, and I had this analogy, which is, you know, if someone gave you one car to drive for the rest of your life, you would drive that really careful. Oh, you yeah. know, but then we do it with our bodies. We've only got the one body, um, and we drive it like we stole it. You know, and that sometimes can be a can be a challenge because you think, oh, actually, I'll just drive it till the wheels fall off, and then the wheel fall off, and you're like, oh, shit, this doesn't drive so well anymore. So I can send you the kind of notes that I put, and I know you've taken a lot, which is really good as well. So, yeah, if, you could, if you could, please, I'm, I'm gonna re, I'm gonna re, uh, re, redo it all. Redo it all, anyway, yeah. Um, but what does I send it over to you, and then? Um, 
generally what I sit, sit, suggest with these sessions is we sit like say I, I won't book them in with you but if you, you can book them in every quarter or however you want to do it and just say look you, you, you've got Sarah and uh, Nicholas details mm -hmm. just book, book, them, book them in but then um, part of what you do is say okay ha what's happened since the last one what, what's worked what ha hasn't all that sort of stuff and you can bring with you different challenges or different opportunities and all that sort of stuff as well the end of Feb, yeah, so that's that's yeah, yeah. Then you can see what what I've done. Yeah, exactly. And then, um, but within the time, what I suggest is when I've sent them to you, if you send it yeah. back to say this is this is what we, we did, but these are your, your specific goals. And after each one of them, all the goals are in the deadline, uh, and they all need someone who you're then reporting back to. So whether it's me or Megan or a combination or something like that. Yeah. So and even if you just send me stuff, I'm happy just to sort of you know, yeah, I've got it. Um, but then it's it's. It's having that um, accountability is really important. Yeah, makes that, sense. Has that been useful? Yeah, mate. Yeah. Blow my mind. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, Good. proper. You, the thing is, uh, yeah. you've got you've got such an exciting future ahead of you. So in in all the ways of business, the bodybuilding, and the and the coaching, and um, it's really just about how you how you get there quicker. Mm. You know, you I, no doubt you get to all these places. It's just. Why, why, why not do it in three months rather than three years you know yeah. accelerate your progress to, to, to there um, and also enjoy it along the way mm. you know uh, so, so 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 it should be great to see love it so, if you think of anything else though, just 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 let me know mate I think uh, I need to get my head around this first <laughs> that's uh, that, that's prop, that's blown my mind a lot yeah love it yeah no good yeah definitely all makes sense you think of all those big, big, those big goals and those big things you want to do, and and don't be modest or shy with them. You know, like it's just between you and I. So, if some of those things sound a bit Atlantis, you know, uh, yeah. fine, we'll go for it. You know, I joke about you. I'm not sure you're on your list, but you know, just go for. Think about what what you're going to do with all this, because mm. you're going to be in a position where you have to decide. So, enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. Enjoy it. Yeah, enjoy it. But yeah, man, that's that's wicked. That okay. that's wicked. That's proper. Yeah. Oh, good. Good. Well, I got it's helpful. It's it's just sometimes it's having that thought process. Of why do yeah. I do it? What am I doing? How am I going to do it? Um, why do I do it like this? Mm. Um, and as you said, you know, about coaching, you kind of I was going to do it. It's sort of like, well, okay, but why haven't you done it already? It's just we get we get kind yeah. of bogged down in the day to day. I yeah. think, yeah, no, I, I know I should do it. It's made me realise that I could have done it a while ago, just with thinking back now with what people actually want when they message me. Mm. Certain people, anyway. Yeah. Kind of if I can save you some of the mistakes and accelerate yeah. some of the other bits, that, that, that makes sense really. I'm gonna have to go and have a, a, a tea or something now. <laughs> Just uh, soaking. Yeah, mate. <laughs> I'll have to have a shower because I want to honestly mate. I feel like I'm just trained honestly it's, it's the that brain games that's it how it is, works it yeah. Is. Yeah. I should have had some adapter this morning <laughs> yeah that was awesome mate thank oh, you I really no, appreciate it thank time. you alright let's go I'll walk out with you guys I'm going yeah. to